Welcome to Shop Saver Minutes. I'm Router Bob. I wanted to put together a video to kind of explain the concept of tool touch off. Uh, we've developed some really, really neat technology here at Shop Saver CNC to make that simple for your operator. Before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the machine and some fundamentals. When you first turn your machine on, the first thing you're going to do is home it. There's a button on the control that says home and you press that. And if you watch the machine, the first thing you'll see is it will actually, the spindle starts raising until it hits a sensor and then it stops. The other two axes do the same thing. So when the machine completes the homing process, it's at the machine home. Now, in machine coordinates, that would be X0, Y0, Z0, okay? So on the router spindle, it's up here. All right, now think about that. If that's Z0, but I've got actually to do machining down here and the tools are certain length, Somehow I have to figure out what that distance is, and that's what's called the tool offset. Now, let's get into that in a little bit more detail. Okay, I've got a graphic here on the screen for you to look at, and, and to I'll explain some fundamentals. Now, what you see down here, this could be a fixture, this could be the machine table, this could be a, a piece of MDF spoil board, all right? So basically, uh, and, and these represent the tool positions, and this represents the material. Okay, so when I'm setting the machine up, typically I'm going to have to make a determination as to whether I touch the tool off to the top of the spoil board material or to the top of the part. It depends on what you're making. If you're doing kitchen cabinets, you're probably going to touch it off down here. So we'll turn that off. And you're probably going to touch it off, and here's why. Think about it. that makes this surface Z zero. So in code, any Z that I see that's negative, I know it's cutting down into the spoil board. And, and if I want to cut a part out, I'm probably going to have to have that tool cut in maybe five to ten thousandths, all right? And I want to make sure of that because uh, I don't want parts not cut through. All right, now, now, if you do it this way, if I change material thicknesses, so if I've got some three quarter inch plywood, if I've got half inch Baltic birch, if I've got quarter inch stuff, Everything works without changing any setup on the machine. Now, if if I'm touching off to the top, all right, instead of this, then what happens is every time the material changes, I have to go in and touch tools off because think about when I tell it a certain thickness, it's got to be that thickness. Whereas if I touch off to the spoil board, there's a, there's a lot of room for error there. So the first thing you do is you make that decision as to whether or not you want to touch off to the top of the material or the top of the spoil board. Okay, now let's look at this graphic a little differently. We're looking from the front. I've turned the axis on so you can actually see this plane right here is actually Z0. So that's where I'm going to touch the tool off to, all right? Now, you see in the drawing, I've basically adjusted that, and that's how in, in the drawing I make that line up with where I want it to be on the machine. Now, let's look at what we would do if, uh, if we were actually going to touch off to the top of the material. Okay, now in this illustration, we've got it set up in the software where we're actually going to touch off to the top. So that you see that the zero plane is lined up with the top, so our tool would be touched off to the top of the material. So you have to make a decision of what's going to be the Z plane. Once again, if you're doing panel goods where it's multiple thicknesses, you're probably going to touch off to the top of the spool board. Sometimes you touch off to the top of the part. Okay, now. That kind of explains that relationship. Now, what we've got to figure out is how we make this machine know that. So let's take a look at the mechanics of the tool. First off, you'll have a router bit, you'll have a collet, and you'll have a collet nut. And that basically holds the tool in the machine. So I would actually put the collet nut on the collet, and there's a little spring in there, so you press that in. And then that actually goes up at the end of the spindle, the tool goes into the collet, and you tighten it. So that's basically what holds it in. Okay, so once we've got that in the machine, then we have to do a process that we call touch off. In touch off, we basically bring the tool down to the surface and, and we hit a button on the control that says set Z. And, and that then in the control reads that number that it came down from home and records that. So anytime I use that tool, it comes down, that becomes easier, all right? And of course, every time I change tools, I have to do that process again. So it becomes real cumbersome. What if you got a tool changer? What if you got a process that's four or five tools? You know, a typical cabinet nest may be three to five tools, depending on what you're doing. So, all right, let's look at some other methods of touching tools off that maybe are a little bit more automated. There's one system that uses what's called a tool touch-off plate or something, and here's what they do. If they want to touch the tool off, 
They bring a plate over here, they jog the machine over, they hook a little wire onto it because it's an electrical connection, and the machine comes down and touches off, and that's how the control gets its reading. Well, that's fine until you need to do the second or third or fourth like that, so it, it makes it pretty cumbersome. We developed a tool measurement switch system here at Shop Saber CNC that's really, really good and it's real simple. Here's the, basically, here's how the fundamental works. The mechanics are a switch and it's really, really, really durable. And so basically the machine comes down, the tool actually comes over and it trips that switch. It actually does it more than one time and it takes the average, so it makes it much more accurate. Okay, so the control records that number, that position the machine was in Z when that switch tripped, all right? So that's, that's the beginning of the offset. And so from that point on, then the, the machine knows how deep it is. Now before you do that, when you tell it you, where you want Z0 to be, first off you come over and you touch it off and you tell it set Z0, and from that, that's the zero plane until you change it. Then once you've touched your tool off, it knows where everything is. And you actually, when you put a next tool in, you just put the tool in, you hit the touch off button, it hits the switch and it's set, there's nothing else. You, you never have to reset the Z plane until uh, you change the spoil. Let's say you, you change fixtures or you fly cut the spool board. So it's really, really nice. Okay, let's say you've got a more sophisticated machine that's got a tool changer. Let's look at the startup with this system from scratch. All right, my spool board's fly cut, so the first thing I do is load a tool, and I usually select one that's straight. And I hit the button on the control that says tool HT, which means tool height. All right, the machine jogs over above the switch and it slowly jogs down until it, it actually trips that switch and it takes that reading. Now it knows the height of that tool. Okay, then following that, I'm gonna go over and jog that tool over to the top of the surface and, set, and press the button that says Z0. Now I know where the top of the surface is. So that's how the machine knows where Z0 is, all right? Now from that point on, all I have to do is just load each of the other tools, hit the tool height button, and it, the machine goes over and touches off each one of them. And that's all I have to do from that point on. Now let's say I, a tool gets dull or I break it, all I have to do is go over to the machine, uh, load the tool, uh, hit the tool height button, and it goes and touches it off. Now the only time, let's say now that I've refly cut, so all my tools are set, all of them are set, everything's cut and perfect. Let's say I've refly cut, so the Z's changed. All I do is I select a tool, I actually go over and have it touch it off, then I take it over to the top of the new spool board surface and I hit the Z0 button and everything's dialed in. All the other tools are adjusted. You know, there's another little feature of this system also where I can say, um, don't go any deeper than this. So it might be, don't go deep enough to hit the base of that fixture. It might be, don't go deep enough to hit the surface of my table. And once again, everything internally is mathematics, so, so it makes adjustments. It doesn't matter which tool you use, it can't cut the table. So that's a really nice feature. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Shop Saber Minute. Thanks for watching.